Hey everybody, uh, welcome to Planes Overhead. I hope you guys are doing good. And uh, festive greetings to all my Indian subscribers, yes. And uh, hello to everyone across the world. Alright, so today I'm going to start off with a new course, uh, new series that is uh, the Airbus A320. And uh, before we start off with this course, uh, I want to remind you that this course is intended for understanding purposes only. I absolutely do not recommend any practical usage or application of the knowledge that you acquire here. Please always refer to your manuals such as the FCOMs, FCTMs since they are always kept current. Each aircraft has its specific set so kindly refrain from generalizing anything. I've tried my best to keep the information as updated as possible and of course yes I would love to receive reviews, suggestions, comments, opinions and updates from your end. Or disclaimer yes that was required as well since uh, I do not own any of the images and content used in this course all of it is a reproduction of the Airbus manuals just to serve the purpose of the of easier understanding of the systems and procedures as mentioned earlier I do not recommend any practical application of the information in the course and I shall not be liable for any part of this course being used in real-world scenarios under any circumstances so what's in the course so we have systems of the aircraft, air conditioning, pressurization, auto flight, communications, electrical, fire protection, flight controls, fuel, hydraulics, ice and rain protection, landing gear, lights, navigation, oxygen, pneumatics, APU, power plant, instruments. Alright, let's begin. So this video is going to deal with the general overview of the aircraft. So the 320 is a, is a family, Airbus 320 family, which has four types of aircraft. That is uh, 318, 319, and 320. All right. So A320 is a twin-engine subsonic medium-range aircraft. So basically, it's a twin-engine, of course, and it doesn't cross a Mach 1, and it has a medium range. That's a key feature. It's a fly-by-wire control. So, so basically, there's no direct mechanical linkages uh, from your uh, cockpit to the flight control surfaces itself. So all is through electronics, computers, and wires actuators yes it follows a dark cockpit philosophy that's a very important feature as well so what happens is uh, what Airbus says suggests is uh, if your cockpit is dark if there are uh, no systems uh, eliminate systems uh, lights eliminated in the cockpit so that system or the aircraft is op operating normally all right that's a key feature as well so that has four golden rules for pilots first one is fly navigate communicate as uh, most of us know it is very important here so fly navigate communicate is you fly 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 the aircraft always navigate you should know where you are where you have to go communicate is between uh, two pilots could be with the ATC with the cabin crew with the flight dispatcher com company anybody use appropriate level of automation at all times Airbus recommends that Understand the FMA at all times is very important as well. FMA is flight mode annunciator. I will talk about it uh, when we talk about the FS panel. Take action if things do not go as expected. So basically that means is if, uh, if suppose example, your autopilot is not doing things as you would expect it to, you take action, you take control. All right, some numbers to talk about. It's a two-member crew operation with one or two observer seats. The earlier aircraft uh, used to have two uh, observer seats. Now I think it has been reduced to one only in all aircraft. Now that is max takeoff weight 75 tons is again uh, I'm just giving you a reference value so just for your reference just keep it in mind. Range 2700 to 3200 nautical miles. A321 is uh, longer by 7 meters when compared to the 320. 318 is shorter by 6 meters. Now let's talk about ground handling, ground maneuvering. Now the A320 requires a minimum payment width of 23 meters to make a 180 degree turn on the you know payment but the 321 requires 28 meters so we have to take utmost care when we are taxiing and ground handling the 321 since it could since it requires uh, 28 meters uh, this will especially come into picture uh, in a shorter uh, you know uh, uh, smaller airfields where the payments might be shorter another interesting thing if the wing of the A320 clears an obstacle, the tail will also clear it. But that's not the case with the 321. I'll show it to you in the next diagram here. So now this is the 321 uh, aircraft. And uh, as you can see, this is the length of the fuselage. And this is the wingspan. So the fuselage is quite longer compared to the wingspan. So for this aircraft to clear an obstacle, the tail has to clear. Only then your wing will clear. So tail has to clear, then your wing will clear. 320, the wing is clearing, the tail will also 
clear. Alright, it's more to do with the length of the fuselage basically. Okay, so there are some unpressurized areas in the aircraft, meaning they are not pressurized of course. So they are tail cone, main gear bay, air conditioning compartment, nose gear bay and ray dome. Now, interesting question could be why? Why are they unpressurized? So now as you can see, these areas are huge. This is a voluminous area, wheel, wheel well is also a big area. So what the uh, Airbus uh, suggested, well, since pressurization comes at cost, it costs you fuel, right? So they thought instead of uh, you know burning a lot of more fuel to pressurize these areas, let's make them structurally strong. So they can basically handle the stress of the differential pressure that is created. So they are constructed in such a way to you know basically have savings. So we, uh, as a pilot, we just need to know these are the areas. All right, there are two cargo compartments with three doors. So here it is. Now, this is a 321. So let's just ignore the top ones. Basically, the 320 doesn't have these cabin emergency exits like this. It's on the wing totally. But anyway, we are talking about cargo. So this is the two cargo compartments here with three doors. All right, so the bulk cargo door, aft cargo door and the forward cargo door. The bulk cargo door can be opened from the inside and the outside. These two guys here, aft and forward, cannot be opened only from the outside and the bulk is relatively smaller in size but the compartment is same okay next up is the cockpit layout pretty important yes this is what a cockpit looks like of the a320 okay so what does it have so it has six lcd units here one two three four five six that's a standard feature two side sticks no control column so there's no control column in the between the side sticks on the right and the left Alright, the two loudspeakers, these are the two loudspeakers. The seats are electrically and manually controlled. Now FS, now this is important. Now this is what we are discussing about. Now this is your FS panel. So it has your PFT and your ND. This one is PFT, this one is your ND. Alright, so now PFT, is, since it says flight instruments, right? So PFT has all, its, all your speed, pitch, bank, altitude, heading, vertical speed and so on. In the PFT, this top portion is called your FMA. We were talking the golden rules, right? So FMA is flight mode annunciator. So where you know the status of the aircraft. So what status, you th whether it's descending, whether it's climbing, whether auto thrust is engaged, autopilot is engaged, whether you know you are in nav managed navigation mode, you are heading mode and so on. So that is about PFT and that is about FMA, flight mode annunciator. Now the ND here has flight plan, it has waypoints, uh, airfields, VOR stations, your ground speed and so on. It also shows terrain, it shows weather as well, when the selection is made of course. Alright, that's about FS. ECAM. Now ECAM is electronic centralized aircraft monitoring and these two LCD screens form a part of the ECAM. Alright, so ECAM basically has your engine parameters and your system parameters and it also shows your checklist in case of an abnormal uh, procedure. So uh, there's something called an ECP on the pedestal, uh, ECAM control panel, which I'll show it to you. So that actually is where you can select a specific system and that system displays on the ECAM and that uh, you can check the parameters if it is working normally or not. Next up is ISIS. Uh, okay, so that is integrated standby instrument system. All right, this image is uh, relatively longer, I, uh, older, I mean. And uh, so here are your standby instruments. So what now these guys have done in the newer aircraft is you have one single instrument that is integrated standby instrument system that has all your, you know, um, uh, P, uh, all your attitude indicator speed and everything and it also in fact has ILS as well so in case you you have a blackout in the cockpit you can still fly using that all right so the glare shield is another important uh, part of the cockpit layout and uh, this is your glare shield on the top so the glare shield also has in the between it has something called as an FCU all right so flight control unit that is and uh, it is used for short term flight management system so where you can actually select your heading speed altitude vertical speed autopilot controls are there auto thrust controls are there approach controls are there and so on on the other side of the glare shield you have your QNH where you can set your QNH your ND and range whatever on the ND range and mode selector you need you can select FD's or FD push button is here as well chrono there's a clock uh, where you can time check basically and uh, your auto land and other master caution warning systems are here. All right, so I think that's about cockpit layout. Let's talk about pedestal. All right, so this is what a pedestal looks like and it has a lot of uh, features, I'm sure, and uh, I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. 
So NCDU is multi-control display unit and uh, it is basically the brain of the computer in a way. So it is a long-term flight management system and uh, in this you can load your flight plan performance uh, you know you have your uh, radio frequency set on uh, on your approaches can be set so this is where all the calculations are made okay now this is what i was talking about ecp ecam control panel so basically you have your uh, electrical hydraulic pages here you can select and that will show up on the ecam these are your thrust levers these are your radios on this side on this side and both the sides radio one radio two Engine controls like masters, ignition. Ignition is a common uh, control for both the engines. This is your transponder where you can set your uh, ATC, whatever transponder code given by the ATC. These are your flaps. This is your speed brakes here, rudder trim, parking brake. Uh, this is your gravity gear extension. This is your pitch trim. This is your weather radar here. Uh, these are some lights here and uh, some more lights here. So there are a lot of, lot of things once you start flying or do your type rating, you'll get hold of all of this. Now let's talk about the overhead panel. Overhead panel, this is what it looks like. Uh, there's the maintenance panel here, uh, which generally pilots do not have much, uh, the, much of the need. I mean, you don't have a lot of uh, things to do with that, but you should know where it is. Circuit breaker panel. Now this is, a, this is the primary circuit breaker panel. There's another set of huge circuit breaker panel behind uh, the RHS, that's the right hand seat. And this basically, uh, I think, deals with all the captain's uh, important, uh, you know, systems and all the important uh, systems reset are on this overhead panel. This, this is your third standby radio. That's ADRS, that is uh, Air Data Inertial Reference System. Aircraft systems are here in the middle, this middle row, uh, fire, hydraulic, fuel, electrical, air conditioning, etc. That's your GPWS, Ground Proximity Warning System. External lights, takeoff, I mean, sorry, landing, landing, there, taxi lights, strobe lights, navigation lights, etc. All right, uh, and another thing, okay, uh, what about uh, a lot of other things? I'll just uh, mark it up. So, there's, this is the APU uh, system here, then there's ventilation panel here, uh, your CVR cockpit voice recorder is here, and anyway, uh, there are a lot of things uh, which we will uh, learn uh, through the course. Alright guys, uh, that's it. I think we have covered uh, all physical attributes of the aircraft and uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it, give it a thumbs up. Do not, to for do not forget to share it. Comment below if you have any doubts, please. I will get back to you. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the Facebook page for regular updates. Alright then, uh, I'll see you in the next video with the air conditioning system. And till then, bye-bye. Cheers and happy landings. Have a great day guys. Take care.